The Earth is entering an unprecedented ecological crisis. Humanity's devastating actions have turned New Zealand into one of the most disaster-prone nations on the planet, second only to Bangladesh. 55 species have already gone extinct, and 25 million birds die every year. An ecosystem that evolved over 80 million years has nearly vanished in just two centuries. Now the country is finally fighting for its ecological survival through massive projects that use smart AI-powered traps, nighttime scanning drones, and environmental DNA analysis, considered some of the most ambitious conservation efforts in the world. If successful, New Zealand will become the first nation on Earth to completely eliminate invasive animals on a nationwide scale. Are you ready? Today's documentary begins right now. New Zealand is one of the most ecologically sensitive lands on Earth. It broke away from the supercontinent Gondwana about 80 million years ago and drifted in isolation across the ocean. The nearest country is Australia, more than 1,200 miles away, separated by the Tasman Sea. Here, evolution took its own path. 93% of all reptiles and 80% of all bird species exist nowhere else on the planet. There are no tigers, no foxes, not even snakes. It's a place where prey animals had no reason to be afraid. For tens of millions of years, New Zealand was truly a kingdom of birds. With no natural predators lurking around, birds gradually lost the ability to fly because flying takes energy. And why fly when there's no danger? About 80 to 90% of native birds became walkers, kiwi, kakapo, takahe. They built nests right on the ground and laid eggs larger than a tennis ball. In fact, the only native land mammals were bats, and they played a crucial role in pollination and seed dispersal, helping the forests live and thrive. An extraordinary ecosystem of Earth, and one that's incredibly fragile, it takes only one uninvited guest to turn it into hell. And that guest was about to arrive. When the Maori first set foot on these islands around the years 1250 to 1300, they came on wooden canoes carrying what seemed like a harmless creature, the kior, or Polynesian rat hiding in the cargo. Silently, these rats gnawed on the eggs and chicks of flightless birds that couldn't run couldn't defend themselves, and had never learned fear. But that was only the beginning. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Europeans arrived, and they brought with them a true invasion storm. Black rats, brown rats, cats, dogs, goats, sheep, and vast forests that were cut down for timber to make way for farming. Within just a few years, rats spread across the country and many native birds vanished forever. You might ask, if there were rats, why not release cats to take care of them? But New Zealand isn't Tom and Jerry. Here, cats are the real reapers. They don't just hunt rats. They kill anything smaller than themselves. Even worse, cats drove rats to hide deeper and breed faster. One single cat, a stray named Tibbles, once wiped out an entire species the Stevens Island Wren, in just a short time. And then, humans made an even bigger mistake. Between 1830 and 1860, Europeans introduced rabbits for food and for sport hunting. They thought, if they thrive in England, they'll thrive here too. But they forgot. New Zealand had no wolves, no foxes, no snakes, nothing to keep the rabbits in check. The result, a rabbit plague. By the late 19th century, in many areas, the density reached 200 to 300 rabbits per 2.5 acres. The ground moved like ocean waves. Vegetation was stripped bare like a desert. The soil turned barren. Farmers went bankrupt one after another. The government offered bounties, hired professional hunters, built fences, set traps, dug burrows. But it was all in vain. After failing in their war against the rabbits, Europeans in New Zealand came up with what they thought was a brilliant idea, releasing stoats to wipe out the rabbits. Wait, the enemy of my enemy 
must be my friend, they thought, right? But rabbits run much faster than stoats. A rabbit can reach speeds of 25 to 30 miles per hour, while a stoat only manages about 15 to 18. Catching prey that's one and a half times faster out in the open fields was nearly impossible. So in no time, the stoats discovered an easier feast, the flightless native birds, kiwi, kakapo, takahe, creatures that had once ruled this peaceful kingdom, suddenly became the perfect meal. They moved painfully slow. Kiwis just four to five miles per hour, and kakapo even slower, barely two. And there was another irresistible treasure, bird eggs. No need to chase, no need to stalk, just an open buffet. Worse yet, stoats had a habit of surplus killing, slaughtering far more animals than they could eat, driven by some relentless predatory instinct. The result? Over 55 bird species in New Zealand have gone extinct. For the kiwi, the national symbol, only about 5% of chicks survive without human intervention. The kakapo, the world's only flightless parrot, once dropped to just about 240 to 250 individuals. Some species, however, were luckier. The kia, clever enough to tear open car parts to find food. The weta, so heavy it's called a giant insect. And unbelievably, a few species even began to evolve backward, trying to regain the ability to fly, just to escape this invasive killer. Just when it seemed New Zealand had hit rock bottom, Humans still hadn't learned their lesson. After rats, rabbits, and stoats, another monster arrived, this time from its neighbor Australia, the brush-tailed possum. At first, the British brought them over to farm for fur coats, but once released into an ecosystem with no natural predators, they turned into an unstoppable invasion army. Can you imagine? From just a handful of animals, their population exploded to 30 million possums. They devoured native forests bare, especially the rimu tree, a vital food source for the kakapo. Even worse, possums carried tuberculosis bacteria, forcing thousands of cattle to be destroyed every year. The economic loss reached 3.3 billion New Zealand dollars a year, enough to build dozens of hospitals. Meanwhile, rats kept devouring bird eggs. Feral cats hunted between 1.12 billion and 3.7 billion birds every year. Yes, billions. German wasps stole all the forest honey, leaving many species starving. These invasive creatures didn't just destroy resources. They brought parasites and diseases, attacking birds, livestock, and even humans. So what happens if nothing is done? Every year in New Zealand, 25 million native birds die because of invasive species. Every week, 20 kiwi birds, the national symbol, disappear. The entire country now has only about 70,000 kiwis left. A paradise that once was the kingdom of birds for 80 million years now stands on the brink of becoming a land of silence. And that's when New Zealand made the boldest conservation decision in its history. Predator-free, 2050. A plan to completely eradicate rats, stoats, and possums from the country within 34 years. If successful, New Zealand will become the first nation on Earth to wipe out invasive animals across its entire territory by its own hands. But New Zealand refused to surrender. The entire nation switched to counterattack mode, rallying around a bold mission called Predator Free 2050, a plan to completely wipe out rats, stoats, and possums by the year 2050. Sounds like science fiction? Picture a decades-long grand surgery. But instead of scalpels, they use traps. Thousands, then tens of thousands of them stretched across mountains, coasts, and valleys, connected like a vast biological security network. Some traps are egg-baited and precisely sized, so stoats get caught while birds stay safe. Others are equipped with AI that recognizes shape and movement, opening only for possums while ignoring passing kiwis. 
There are thermal cameras, drones scanning through the night, and environmental DNA sampling in forest streams to sniff out invaders, even after they've vanished. On key islands, the strategy is even more aggressive. Total eradication of predators, followed by building biosecurity fences, so not a single tail can sneak back in. Imagine a city where traps are as common as Wi-Fi hotspots. That's exactly how Wellington tackled the Miramar Peninsula. By 2025, the plan became a national pledge to nature. Eliminate predators from 49,000 acres without the need for fences. Maintain strong control over another 2.5 million acres. And, most importantly, develop technology powerful enough to eradicate at least one invasive species on a large scale. Behind those numbers are the sweat and dedication of volunteers, helicopters dropping bait over untouched mountains, and forest patrol teams replacing batteries, logging data, and shifting traps by the meter. Of course, debates continue. Whether to keep using 1080 poison, how far robots should replace humans, and whether the costs are justified. But every morning when the forests grow quieter without rats, and every night when fewer stoat eyes gleam in the dark, that's a vote for the future. New Zealand is trying to rewrite the ending of its 80 million year story. And this time, they're determined to do it with science, discipline, and community resilience. And to prove those numbers aren't just on paper, let's look at three remarkable campaigns. In Wellington, the Miramar Peninsula has been turned into an open-air laboratory for predator-free. Traps are laid out as densely as streetlights. Thermal cameras scan the night and volunteers walk through every alley. The result? The invaders were almost completely wiped out. But that almost cost them another 207 days just to track down a single stoat, the last shadow slipping through thousands of traps as if playing chess with the entire city. Yes, just one animal, if missed, can burn through millions of dollars of effort. Leaving the capital, head to Waiheke Island, often mistakenly called Weka, where the community turned conservation into a part of everyday life. Traps line everything, from rocky shores and forest edges to backyard fences. Each time a giant rat is reported, it sparks a wave of media attention, inspiring hundreds more families to join the mission. Meanwhile, in Akaroa, on the Banks Peninsula, over 130 landowners joined forces to create a connected trap network stretching for miles, an invisible bridge linking valleys and slopes. There are no flashy headlines, no dramatic hunts, only quiet persistence, replacing bait, checking logs, moving traps a few feet ahead to stay one step in front of the invaders. If Miramar is the technological punch, Waiheke is the power of community and Akaroa is the long song of perseverance. Three stories, one message. To reclaim paradise, you have to hunt down every last one. New Zealand was once an evolutionary paradise. 80 million years without predators, a land ruled by birds. Yet in just 200 years, rats, rabbits, stoats, cats, and possums have turned its forests into a land of silence. But Predator Free 2050 offers hope. Through science, discipline, and the power of community, the songs of birds may return once again. This story isn't just about New Zealand. It's about every place we call home. A reminder that one wrong decision can rewrite the fate of nature itself. So, what do you think? Should we use strong technologies like 1080 poison, AI, and biocontrol to save species or accept their disappearance forever? Share your thoughts in the comments below, hit like, subscribe, and turn on the bell to follow the next part of this series.